Yes, I think people have a misconception in one of the famous stories in this week's Parsha we should talk about. Which story is that? So, new week, new Parsha. Parsha Lech Lecha. We'll just remind our viewers, as always, last year we discussed in Parsha Lech Lecha, Avram Zavinu Bitachon. Where did it go to? How did he come to Eretz and straight away leave once he faced the first challenge he had? We discussed that in great detail last year. We'll link that video at the end of this video. Also, we'd like to thank all our new subscribers and all our new viewers and the frequent viewers that come back to our channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed these videos. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel and help us grow it. Now, this week, I want to discuss the story of Lot and Avraham, where Lot separates from Avraham and goes to Sodom. Because when you look at the Psukim, there are a lot of questions that rise out of the Psukim. When the Torah starts it off, it starts with Vigam lelot Avraham. Also, Lot who walks with Avraham has a lot of cattle, a lot of belongings, and suddenly it's not good enough for him. The life over there is not good enough for him. And the interesting thing is just two Psukim back, we see that also Avraham Avinu had a lot of cattle and a lot of stuff that he got in Mitzrayim a few Psukim before that. Suddenly now with Lot, it's a problem. Vigam lelot. The Torah is trying to emphasize that also Lot has, also Lot had all these belongings. So first of all, what what was this big problem with Lot having all these belongings? But more so, when you continue reading the Psukim, the questions just get even bigger. The Torah doubles down on the fact that they couldn't sit together. Lashevet Yachdav, it's mentioned twice in the Pasuk. So if you look at that Pasuk, what exactly was the problem? Why couldn't they sit together? Was it the beginning of the Pasuk or was it the end of the Pasuk? What is the Torah trying to tell us? And then probably the biggest and most disturbing question is, how did Lot end up in Zdom? Lot grew up in Abraham's house, a house full of chesed, full of giving, full of kindness. And from there, Lot goes all the way 180 degrees to Sodom. How did he end up over there in that most terrible place? And why did Abraham allow him to go there? Why, once there is a fight between them, why didn't he offer peace as a solution? Why separate? Where did that come from? So what is going on over here in the story with Lot and Abraham? Why did Lot end up going to Sodom? Why couldn't Abraham have an Abraham Accords and have peace with Lot and get them to sit together and stay together like they've been until now? Yeah, this is really a big question. And especially, I think that Pasuk that says they couldn't sit together, they had a lot of possessions, they couldn't sit together. So was the fact that they couldn't sit together the reason or the result of the fact that they have a lot of possessions? It seems to be both. It starts with they couldn't sit together, only then it mentioned and they had a lot of possessions and therefore couldn't sit together. So what exactly is going on here? And I think to truly understand this, we need to take a step back. The Psukim describing Avram coming back, who maybe financially is in a totally different place than he was when he went down to Mitzrayim. And now coming up, the Psukim describe how Avram goes back. He climbs up. Vaya'al Bisham. He comes up from Mitzrayim and goes back to the same place he was before. Asher Natasham Ohalo Batchila. Where he was at the beginning, where he gave a korban. Avram didn't change. Maybe on the outside, externally, there's more possessions. He's richer than he was before. But this doesn't influence who Avram is as a person. And Avram goes back to his tent. It's interesting that by Avram, it mentions being heavy with gold and silver and cattle. But when it's speaks about his tent, it's back to his tent, Ohalo. When it talks about Lot, it talks about Mikdeh, it talks about cattle, but it talks about Ohalim. He is tents. He sort of is not going back to the same tent, not going back to the same house. It's like someone who wins the lottery and right away goes and leaves his old world, leaves his old life. He's going to build a new mansion, houses. Lot is rich and now he has Ohalim. Now he's not going back to that same place. And maybe this is the key to what happens next because the Pasuk says, Vilona We've mentioned this word, nasa is to raise up. We translate that, that would mean, and the land, the land of Israel didn't raise them up to sit together. And only then it talks about them having a lot of possessions and therefore not being able to sit together. Meaning, Eretz Israel had the potential of raising them up to the point where they could sit together, but they failed in doing that. And we know this concept, Chazal tell us in several different places, we know in Avot, the Mishnah says that one of the merits miracles in Yerushalayim, in the Aliyah Larega, when everybody came to the Mikdash, nobody ever said, I have no room to stay in Yerushalayim. Now, how could that be? There are so many people coming to Yerushalayim at the same time, nobody ever said they don't have room. And we see this concept of room or having room or not having room is almost the key differentiator between the physical world and the spiritual world. We know in Kodesh HaKodeshim, the most spiritual of places, the Aaron Kodesh didn't take up any space. It was there, but when you measured from all ends, it wasn't actually taking up space. Spiritual things don't 
don't take up space. Physical things, almost what defines them is the fact that they take up space. If this is here, then that's not. If I'm here, then you're not, right? If I'm taking this area, not because I hate you, I love you, but just there's no room. I've taken up the space. The ability, therefore, to sit together has to do with, are you focused on the external side? Are you focused on the physical? Are you focused on your belongings, on what you have? And it's interesting, the word used for Lot is he has. Tzona Bakar. It's a different word than used for Avram. You can always have more. But Avram, it's talking about who he is. Avram didn't change. Avram's the same person. Even though you may look on the outside, you may see more things around him. He seems richer. He hasn't changed who he is at the core. If you're focused on the external world, you don't have room for other people. If you're focused on the material world, then you really can't have room for other people. There's a saying in Hebrew, when you welcome people into your house, they say, you're sure there's room. And then you say, if there's room in the heart, there's room in the home. And what that saying means is that, again, when you're focused inward, then there's room. The lack of room is when you're focused only on the external side of things and the physical side of things. That's maybe what's happening here. Lot is stuck in Mitzrayim. Lot is stuck in that non-Eretz Israel approach where the physical world is just what it is. It's just the physical, not as it is in Eretz Israel when the physical land is Eretz HaKodesh, when the land is supposed to be part, is supposed to be an expression, is supposed to serve the inside. Avra makes Aliyah, okay? He comes back to Eretz Israel. He raises himself up and the land raises him up with it. Lot sort of just gets dragged after Avra. He doesn't seem to actually go back up to Eretz Israel and therefore, as the Pasuk says, the land, Eretz Israel has the potential of raising them up. But because of the mindset Lot was in, he wasn't able to get that blessing of Eretz Israel raising them up to sit together. And only then comes the words, oh, and he had a lot of possessions. As he had a lot of possessions, they couldn't sit together. In the practical sense, in the objective sense, there's a lot of possessions, they couldn't sit together. This is, I think, at the core of what's happening here. Lot's inability, Lot being caught up with his possessions, Lot caught up with that Mitzrayim perspective, so focused on the external, becoming addicted to that physical world, to that external perspective, and not being able to raise up to the place where no matter what they have, they still could sit together. Amazing. I really like really what you're saying about the contrast of Mitzrayim and El Tisrael, because really, when we think about El Tisrael and Mitzrayim and the relationship between the two, we always go back to Yitziat Mitzrayim or to Am Yisrael in Galut in Mitzrayim, the time all of Am Yisrael spent there and what was absorbed into Am Yisrael during the years of the Galus in Mitzrayim and then from there onwards how different Eretz Yisrael is from Eretz Mitzrayim. But actually really the whole relationship with Mitzrayim begins with Avraham Avinu begins in this week's Parsha and we really see it with Lot and Avraham where Avraham exactly like you were saying comes back to Eretz Yisrael. He manages to raise himself back up and go back to exactly where he was beforehand and while Lot stays in that mindset of Mitzrayim and we know that in Hebrew really the word Mitzrayim comes from the same Shoresh as Mitzrayim as a straight, something that's closing on you from both sides, making things narrow and closed on and feeling stuck, feeling like you have no place. And exactly the opposite as Eretz Yisrael, like you were saying, the many, many Midrashim we have about Eretz Yisrael, how Eretz Yisrael is like the elasticness of a skin of a deer where it can stretch out. And even though when you let it go, it's tiny and small, it can still stretch out and cover up a huge space. The same thing with Eretz Yisrael. When you rise up to the level of Eretz Yisrael, lo lam lo amar adam never is there not enough place for people to be. And maybe really this is what actually happened to Lot in Mitzrayim, this narrowness of his mind where we know Avraham Avinu lives his life based on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what Hashem wants from him, looking at reality through that scope, through those eyes of what Hashem sees and what Hashem wants. When he comes to solve this famine, but this is what Hashem wants, we're continuing, we're moving on. Lot got caught up with the materialistic world, with the world of Mitzrayim, where the reality is so narrow and sometimes it's hard to see beyond it. And this is the amazing thing in the Psukim, when Lot raises his eyes to look around, when Avraham tells him, maybe you need to go somewhere else, he sees Dom and he sees it. Tegan Hashem Ke'eretz Mitzrayim. He sees Mitzrayim. This is what he's looking for. This is the mindset that he wants, that he got used to, that now he lives in. And he sees it as Kegan Hashem, again, because he comes from Abraham's house. So still somewhere over there, he knows that Hashem is there. He knows that reality is not really reality, but he's so caught up with Mitzrayim. And he turns Mitzrayim, which we know from Sefer Devarim, from Parshas Ekev, where it says the difference between Eretz Yisrael and Mitzrayim is Kegan Yarak. Eretz Yisrael is a beautiful garden. It's a beautiful place, but it's not Gan Hashem. It's a place that gets its water from the Nile, where El Tisrael is the place where we get the water from the sky, where we turn to Hashem directly. Enei Hashem elokei chaba. Hashem looks at this land, and reality in this land is not the reality around us that we see with a narrow eyes, like in Mitzrayim. The reality around us is the reality that Hashem has for 
Eretz Yisrael. And this is what happens to Lot in this Pasuk, really. You can see how he goes with the mindset he grew with at Abram's house, but he's already caught up with Mitzrayim. He's caught up with this materialistic world, with the reality around him. And really, maybe this is what's behind this whole separation between Lot and Abram. Lot going to Sodom, not because the people there, because only after he went, the Torah tells us that the people there were terrible. Lot might not even known that, but Lot wanted to go there because it reminded him of Mitzrayim. We're just a few psukim back before this story. They were in Mitzrayim. So on the one hand, he was with Avram. He was with the Kedusha, with the Torah. But on the other hand, he was so caught up with the life around it. And slowly, slowly, he thought that by himself, he can get back to that Mitzrayim aspect and live that life over there in Storm. However, he wasn't on that level. Like you were saying, he didn't raise himself up to that level. And so Eretz Yisrael itself, the land didn't open to him. And I heard once a wonderful marshal from my father-in-law, Rabbi Benji Levine, saying, the king has a daughter that he wants to marry off. And of course, the daughter is fed up already with meeting all these guys that her father is setting up for her. So at some point, she just locks herself in a room and she looks through the little tiny keyhole to see who's the next guy. And if she doesn't like him, so she doesn't even prepare. She doesn't even dress herself nicely. She doesn't even act nicely to that person. And when the door opens, she just tries to make that person go away because she doesn't want to live with that person. She doesn't want to marry that person. However, when finally she does see a person that she likes, that's when she prepares herself. That's when she comes out with all her glory, with all her beauty, with all her desire to build a connection between them. So the same thing with Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is the land where Enei Hashem Elokei Chaba, it's the land where Hashem looks on this land. But Eretz Yisrael, like we know also from many Mepharshim and many Midrashim, Eretz Yisrael prepares itself for her children to come back, for the children that came back, thank God, that are now living in Eretz Yisrael. And Eretz Yisrael for Am Yisrael is not just a physical place to live in, it's an actual relationship where each side raises each other up and makes the other side better. You know, it's interesting, there's a concept we've discussed in the past about the difference between the terms kol, which means everything, and ra, which means a lot. You see this in the argument between Yaakov and Esav when Yaakov's trying to convince Esav to take his presence. Esav keeps using the term ra, I have a lot. Yaakov says, I have everything. And we've discussed that saying you have everything doesn't mean that objectively you have more than someone who says they have more. But it's a different mindset. Someone who says, I have everything, Yeshli Kol, it's someone who has everything he needs, who whatever he has, that's his whole world. He understands that everything is a present from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and everything he has, whether it's more or less, is just an expression of that love, is an expression of that present from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Someone who's focused on the external side of things is always counting. How much do I have? And as we said, I can always have more. And we see those words here too. When Avram leaves Mitzrayim, he leaves Vechol Asher Lo. And the term Vechol is used. He has everything. Everything he has is with him. When it discusses the problem, when it discusses their inability to sit together, it's Ki Hayarechusham Rav. They had a lot. They had Rav. Rav and Kol don't go together. If you're in the mindset of Rav, then you don't have room for other people. You have more. You always want more. You have a lot of space and you need even more space. When you're in the mindset of Kol, when whatever you have is all you need. And this doesn't mean you don't have a lot. You can have a lot. But even when you have a lot, like Avram, you still go back to the same place. You're still in the same mindset. You're still at the core at that same place. When you're like that, you have room for everyone. There's no limit to how much you can have and still how much you can make room for others. That difference between Kol and Rav seems to be also the key difference between Avram's perspective followed by Yitzhak and Yaakov, as we say in Benching, referring to all of them Bakol, Mikol, Kol, versus is Lot and later Asav and others who are stuck in that material world and are constantly fighting for new ground, constantly struggling with you taking my space, I'm taking your space, as we know in the world we live in. Exactly, beautiful. Really, it connects the concept of Rav and Kol to the concept of Mitzrayim, of being narrow-minded because when you have a lot and you have no limits, you're actually living in a world with borders and in our world where you will get stuck at some point. It's the people who know that they have everything or everything that they have is what they want, is what they need. That's the people who actually have no boundaries. They have no walls around them. But again, like always, we're out of time, so we have to end here. So we'll link last year's video right now. And Shkoya Thank you, Shkoya. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, and we'll talk again next week. For more Talking Torah videos on different topics, check out our YouTube channel.